that I am a coach and a healer and I use healing methods in my coaching and, um, you know, my mission is to help people see that they are a healer for themselves and to guide and support them in that process. So I use a lot of different tools and, um, yeah, here to share information and be a guide. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Astrologic Astrology, the astrology of I am and this week's Venus Fridays. Well, as you know, Mercury retrograde starts tomorrow officially, and it has kicked off in my life already in a big way. Today's interview is with a woman who is a, a mixture of the spiritual and the practical. She's a businesswoman and she's also a healer. And I think it's fabulous the way she's integrating the two approaches to life. And so I want to share her with you. And without any further ado, please check out this interview with Lisa Taylor. Lisa Taylor. Great to see you, Lorenzo. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for being on the program. This is a joy because we have not talked in quite a while. It's been um, several months, but some big things have been happening for you. Uh, and yeah. for our audience, you are a healer and you are a shaman <laughs> and you bring light to people. And your focus is on helping people heal themselves. Yes. So my focus is really about helping my clients, people, anyone that, that finds me, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or one-on-one, -on -one, reveal their own inner healer. So at the end of the day, we're only responsible for ourselves. And I, through my own personal experience, have learned how to heal myself and I can actually help others heal as well. That's one of my gifts. So I'm on a mission to really help everyone discover that they are their own healer. That's beautiful. Now, is there anything in your astrology chart which indicates your healing ability? Well, I am a Capricorn sun, Pisces moon, Pisces rising. So the Pisces connects me to my spirit world very easily. And that's something I've been doing since I was a child, not knowing that I was connecting to spirit. And um, as I discovered what that was um, through studying shamanism, through studying um, Reiki, through studying astrology, tarot even, uh, it's connected me to knowing that I have intuitive and psychic and healing abilities that are very innate. And um, it actually is through my, my mother's side of the lineage too. Um, so astrologically speaking, I think it's that Pisces moon and rising that really shows how I can dig into the spirit world, but then the Capricorn makes it very tangible in this 3d reality. Yeah. You've made quite a, a name for yourself in business too, right? Yeah. So I, I started a marketing agency in 2012 and I, through the, uh, past kind of three years pre pandemic, I, and through my own life changes, have pivoted the focus to wellness for business owners. And I work with a lot of women, work with men too, but you know, women have a special role, especially during the pandemic where we take on a lot more than, than the men do. And mainly because, you know, women tend to be the primary caregiver. Um, so I've been really focused on helping to, uh, find balance for professional women. Um, and I've been doing some workshops with that as well. So yeah, lots of, lots of big shifts. <laughs> That's beautiful to hear. And your audience has growing is growing now because you're branching out into a YouTube channel. Yeah. So that was a spirit focused move. Um, my guides that I connect with regularly, my spirit guides um, and my human guides, but mostly my spirit guides were like, you've got to share this information. And me sharing what I've been through and what I um, know has been healing for me, but can also help others guide, direct, support. So it's been a beautiful, um, beautiful project. So yeah, the YouTube is called Luna Spiritual Wellness. And it's, it's very much um, 
taking a peek into my life and sharing a lot of personal things. So do you have to know where your Venus is? My Venus, Venus is in um, Sagittarius. So you're a teacher too. Yeah, I have a lot of Sagittarius. You know that. I have a lot of Sagittarius in my chart. Um, yeah, so I'm a natural teacher, which I, I denied for a long part of my life. Well, as a Capricorn, I, I try to make a business out of everything. So. <laughs> so, but- <laughs> the most honest thing that I've ever heard a Capricorn say. <laughs> we're really good at it. I can't, I mean, sorry to brag, but that's what we're, we're you know, we're wired that way. <laughs> I really appreciate that, Lisa, because a lot of Capricorns will will downplay that. But for you to acknowledge it and bring it out and say, yes, you're, you're affirming the value of being both a healer and a person who can make use of the material world. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, that's like comes with acceptance of who you are, right? Just like embracing those gifts and I'm so grateful that I have this beautiful balance of things. Um, but yeah, we, we make a business out of things. So when I, my, my own um, agency, the hive marketing, as it was called formerly, that's, that's a perfect example. You know, I started the agency and then I discovered my healing ability. So I infused that into the business. <laughs> so, you know, quite literally, uh, um, and it's not to be opportunistic. It's to share that, this is my skill set that I can bring to the world. And guess what? People will pay me for it. So that's fantastic. Absolutely. And, and that's why I use the term very specifically. You know how to use the resources of the material world. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Cap- Capricorns get a bad rap in that sense because there's always this, this sort of um, negative sort of uh, implication that they're Machiavellian. And... And on a negative, someone who has Capricorn with a negative energy might be, but that's not what the true Capricorn goat represents. The true Capricorn goat represents the, the strength and the determination to not be distracted on their way up to the top and to be able to reach the top with a goal of having service and understanding of what humanity really is about and what humanity really needs. And I see that in your, in your, everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you for that reflection. I love, I I have read that about Capricorn and to me, it makes the most sense is we're creating structure. We're creating business to serve others. Really. It's it's for the benefit of, of humanity. It's not selfish, even though maybe like you say, in a lower vibration, it could, come across that way. And I've definitely been there in my younger years of like, I'm hitting this goal. I'm making this amount of money because I want to buy these things. (laughs) But, you know, as I've evolved, it's been more about if I do this and reach this goal, I can serve more people. I can make more money to give back more um, and, and bring in the new world, you know, that we all want. Absolutely. So tell us about healing and how you inspire other people to heal themselves and tell us your whole philosophy of why it's important for people to heal themselves and not depend on, um, you know, crutches or, or out, outside sources, even though we may need them to show us the way, but how do you, how do you inspire people to heal themselves? Yeah. Well, um, what I've noticed is, in the moments where I've been really down and really uh, succumbing to tragedy and maybe just in a valley of life, um, I attract more negativity. I attract more challenge. And if I'm able to heal or, or see the value in those challenges, what is the lesson? What is it teaching me? How can I do it differently and process and heal from it? everything shifts. So as a business owner, you know, I think of things and a Capricorn (laughs) through that business lens. And, um, I had a really challenging five years of life most recently. And I, um, I got married. I became a parent overnight. I then got divorced. I moved across the state, all these like really big catastrophic shifts. And, um, through them, I was really, struggling, but I was trying to maintain the sense of balance. Meanwhile, running my agency and my agency was growing. 
through all this, these shifts and changes. And I had friends and family like saying, how are you doing this? How are you like, these are amazing things. How are you processing? And that, and this was all before the pandemic. So it was like, I was getting prepared for something divinely. (laughs) Um, So all of that stuff showed me, wow, you have an, you have an innate ability on, on dealing with chaos, but also it showed me that I could heal myself through all of these big life changes. And I am an experimental person. So I was trying a lot of different things And I would report back to friends and family and they would get really curious. And then that's what actually prompted me to step into coaching because they asked for that service. And so I realized, wow, okay, I I do things a little differently than most people. So maybe I should, as a Capricorn, you know, we like go out and try things and then we bring it back and share it with the community. So I started to write about it and it's being, being put together into a book, but, um, I started to just share it. And that was very healing, as I mentioned, for myself and for others. And, and it really just highlighted how I don't need to look at an outside source. So we're so programmed and conditioned to look to the God, the guru, the whatever to, to heal us, but they like, I'm responsible for me. And I can shift the trajectory. And so it's really just like taking ownership of that and accepting that power because it is a lot of power and it can be scary. But once I I started to peel myself back, because I was pretty crushed. I was broken. I was, I was minimal. I was like this big. (laughs) And then I realized, wait, I don't have to be that big. I can shift everything. And again, I was doing things like breath work every day and meditation and yoga and I went very deep into myself and what I found is more of myself, my true essence, my soul. And that's the most powerful thing. And if I can come through all of that, certainly anyone can. Um, So, so I'm really inspired by that. I'm really inspired that um, we have sovereignty and autonomy. And I think it's the most beautiful thing as we move into this new age. So, you know, if you study, um, yoga and, um, and time periods, you know, we are coming into the age of Aquarius from the age of Pisces, meaning the eon and, you know, Pisces was all about dictatorship and rulership. And the information was held by a few people distributed to the masses and Aquarius is very much the information age. I mean, hello, we have our phone and it has access to everything in the world on our person all the time. (laughs) So that democratization of information, of power, of, of knowing who you are is, is, is power. That is the power now is like consciousness. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's an incredible journey you've been on. And, Tell me about the whole parent thing, because yeah. that came up in, in our readings. It did. And, and I'm, I'm, isn't it fascinating? So for the audience, um, Lorenzo did a reading for me last summer. Was it, has it a year, been a year oh my was God. About in the spring, actually? Yeah. Spring. And what kept coming up was parenting, parenting, parenting. And you were so you were so you were making the point because I think you wanted me to understand. Like, listen, you gotta <laughs> you gotta decide if you want to be a parent or, or just be careful if you don't. <laughs> exactly. and, and I was like, okay, I got it, <laughs> understood. So I'm in this really interesting situation. Um, prior to when we met. Um, I had already become a parent and it was to my nine, my, I heard at the time it was six year old niece and I was married at the time. So she showed up into our lives because her mother, um, needed support, needed help. And so me and my then husband were able to parent her since that time though, we got divorced. I took more of an aunt role, which was my, my natural role instead of a mother. And, um, you know, was trying to like figure that relationship out while still being, you know, connected to my ex and like not wanting that dynamic to be what it was trying to evolve that really, really tricky stuff. And then in May of last year, 
her mother died. So my niece's mom, who is my ex's sister, <laughs> passed away and very suddenly, totally unexpected, not related to COVID. And I just stepped in as, as parent and um, haven't really left her side since then. It's been a year. And um, I see her, you know, five days a week. And I really do feel like a parent as predicted. <laughs> well, it was weird for me because, you know, it was coming up so strongly. And, and at the same time, you weren't really <laughs> feeling <I'm connected>. single. <laughs> Yeah, so it was like... I am single, but yeah. <laughs> like, wow, how, you know, do I do I say this again because it's coming up so strongly or do I leave it alone? It was just a weird moment. So when I yeah. learned it actually became a reality for you, it was like, wow, that's... <laughs> that's... That's why I love astrology. It's like showing you these probabilities, but it's so good to be aware of them, right? Like, wow such powerful information. Absolutely. And so in this journey now, how has that added to what, who you are as a healer and the work that you're doing? I, I have such a uh, keen understanding of what it's like to parent in probably the most challenging moment of our history. Um, I live in California where we're still dealing with um, shutdowns and restrictions and things are opening up meaning like indoor restaurant seating and barber shops and stuff like that in June. So we're like way behind a lot of other States, but um, it's just a really difficult time. And now, you know, it's again, shown me how much of a teacher I am. That's really what it is. Cause I'm not only, you know, a parent, but I'm teaching her like how to show up on time to class. That's on zoom, how to use zoom, how to use, email she doesn't know how to do that like all of these things she doesn't know how to do and I can teach her I'm, I'm grateful that I have the skill set um but like being responsible and like a lot of those life skills is what I've been focusing on with her so it's really bringing everything you know into a more intimate level yeah it's very close and personal it's it's parenting is the greatest challenge and greatest reward I think that we have in life. You can never get it right, but you have the heart to always do your best. And so it's the perpetual striving, but at the same time, accepting and being humble. It takes you through a whole psychological journey. And so. And like the reflections that you get, for example, <laughs> The other day, Sophie used the word hate or not hate, um, stupid twice in a day. And it was really shocking to me. I'm like, why are you saying things are stupid? She's like, you guys say it all the time. I'm like, <laughs> 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 okay. I banned that word now. I'm never using it again. <laughs> when you know that you have an audience as you do, it just makes you cringe because it's not quite how you want to be <laughs> recognized and seen but it's also humbling because children point you back to who you are as a real human being right oh completely yeah there's so many beautiful moments of me teaching her how to like take a breath when things get really hard or smell some essential oil and I have a moment myself that's really difficult and she'll come in and like let's color together. Let's do breath work together. <laughs> so there's lots of beautiful moments for sure. So tell us about your shamanism. Um, a lot of people are becoming aware of what a shaman is, but it still has a sort of mystical air to it. Mm -hmm. And yet, as we've already said, you're a Capricorn, you're about your business. So what does a shaman have to do with a woman who's in a business shamans or medicine people um you know i've studied with uh the foundation for shamanic studies which is a group um based in california but does classes all over the world even online and they share um a methodology that was gathered by a man named michael harner he was kind of an anthropologist and studied with 
many, many, many indigenous uh, shaman cultures around the globe. And then he distilled their practices for a Western audience. So he found commonalities among those, those groups and um, distilled those practices. So I've learned a lot of very specific healing practices through a shamanic lens and a shaman in a tribe would be like um, a business person, for example, in the daytime, and then at night do their shamanic healing work for their community with the intention of bringing messages, healing from the spirit world into the 3D reality that they were living in. So it's, it's very much um, living in two worlds, um, seeing with your heart but also being able to see the spirit world and, and bring information from that perspective down here to, to the mortals on earth. And so for me, um, I've been, you know, I was really confused about how to bring that into my world because it's a natural thing that I, I gravitate towards and something that I'm very connected to, meaning connecting to the spirit world for information. And, um, as I've exposed that part of myself more and more, more wants to be exposed. So for example, I have a friend, um, whom, you know, who's your friend too, Evelyn, she's been connecting me to some of her clients that she can't work on for healing work, particularly. And then once those clients meet me as a healer, and then I tell them my story and I tell them I have a business, they're like, Whoa, wait, you do more than that. That's really interesting. And so I'm able to combine, you know, running a business or being an entrepreneur with healing because it all comes through the client or, or me or you or whatever. So any block that I have, I can heal. And then my business will probably do better. My personal life will do better. My relationship to my kids will be better. So all these blocks that we experience, I think are best suited to particularly spiritual healing. And, um, once you do that and accept that that's kind of happening, you start to see results in every area of your life. And so can you give us an example of either a shamanic practice mm -hmm. or what you mean when you say energies from the spirit world? Traveling to the spirit world, uh, is something you can do. Anyone can do really. And you use a sonic driver such as a specific cadence of drum beat to go into a trance state. So we go in trance states all day long. We scroll through Instagram. We're in a trance state. <laughs> we scroll through Facebook. We're in a trance state. That's so powerful. That's so it's powerful. <laughs> So this is an intentional trance state. So you first set an intention. I want to go to the spirit world to receive a message, play a drum track, either like you can go on YouTube or Spotify and find a drum track. You can drum for yourself, close your eyes, breathe a little bit and imagine you're going to um, a familiar place in nature there, a portal opens and there are tracks that guide you through this process. This is Michael Harner's process foundation for shamanic studies and um you can go up to the upper world or down to the lower world both are equally beautiful and meet a helping spirit with the intention of receiving a message so so there's a formula right to do this when i do healing work i work with my own guides that are healing guides or the client's guides and get messages for that person or directions on what they need to do or just guidance support really. Um, one client was, I was guided to share with him. He's working on actually, you know, something with his business. He wanted to quit his job. He was at a place that was like very toxic. He would come home from work and have sciatica because it was so toxic, meaning his back was in pain, felt really terrible. And it was connected to um, the workplace and the people were very negative. So his guides shared with me that he needs to wear yellow, the color of power, the solar plexus chakra, where your power begins, the stomach, the gut. And guess what? He was having gut issues, of course, because his power was being sucked. So I got guidance for him to have yellow crystals around, wear yellow, eat yellow foods. And, and, and I also did a major healing on this man 
he, I talked to them yesterday. He is, he wrote his resignation letter because he's compelled to get out of that place after the healing work we've done together. Wow. Yeah. So this is something you really believe in. A hundred percent. I'm, I am a case in point of this. I do this on myself. I have, I work with healers that do this work on me. So it's, it's very, very powerful. And I strongly believe in it. But you have to know that there are elements in our current society, in our current world, who think that it has um, negative connotations, uh, particularly uh, people from the dominant culture, religious culture in this country, who would think, you know, she's talking about something that's crazy or demonic. What are you, are you crazy? What are you talking about? It's, it's all about Jesus Christ or it's all about yeah. whatever the language is. What do you, what is your, how do you address that? Yeah. Well, we're all allowed to believe what we want to believe. And, you know, I would also say Jesus Christ is a really beautiful energy. So I believe in that energy too. And that, that spirit for healing. So we, we are humans. We have free will. We each have the power to believe what we want to believe. Um, I'm not here to convince you of anything is what I would say to someone like that. Uh, I, you know, if, if it doesn't resonate with you, that's perfectly fine. I think the future is about coexisting with people that don't always resonate with us and, and that's okay. Um, but I would say there's dark and light to everything. Religious has religious factions have dark sides too. And I can name them for you, but I won't, you probably already know what they are. (laughs) So again, back to you, back to removing that outside source that's going to give you these things and like what's in your heart what is in your what is your soul saying um if it means if it says talk to jesus great i'm not going to steer you away from that the big underlying question in all of this is how do we confront difficulty in life yeah and so you're suggesting you're not just suggesting you're 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 saying very clearly that there are approaches that can liberate you and you don't need to have, you don't need to follow anyone else to that liberation Yeah. or acknowledging that you, you can use various modalities. You can use yoga, you can use meditation, you can use shamanism, you can use astrology, mm-hmm. you can use religion if you need to, or if that's something that resonates with you. So I, I appreciate that, but I really also deeply appreciate the fact that you're so deftly combining both worlds, the spiritual world and the the material world. You, you seem to be really on a clear path towards taking the lines away that says you have to be one or the other. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that reflection. Yeah. I think it's important that we, um, you know, I, I will say like in my younger years, I used to be very black and white, very polarized and, um, binary, which is, it's easy to do, right. We live in a world that has a lot of those examples, but the more that I'm able to live in kind of the gray zone, and be open to like, oh, there's this extreme over here. Good to be aware. There's this extreme over here. They can actually coexist maybe. Um, that There seems to be a lot of benefit and um, stability and balance living in that zone where things can coexist, like a yin and yang kind of model. And so if someone is going through some challenges and they do want to have healing and they do hear you and they, they want to rely less on what outside sources are saying, whether it be their minister or even their therapist, sure. what are some simple things that you can guide them to? What would you suggest that they do to start the process of self healing? Um, well, having that awareness is amazing. That's a great first step. And I would say, you know, the basics always go back to the basics how is your breathing? A lot of us don't breathe properly on a daily basis. Are we breathing in through our nose or our mouth? 
our body's designed to breathe through our nose only. <laughs> so even that shift, it sounds so small, makes such a big difference because then you're feeding your brain. You're taking in more oxygen into your lungs. You're oxygenating your whole body. You'll, you'll literally feel different. You'll have more capacity for life if you do this. Um, I think journaling is a very good basic thing to do if you don't do that on a daily basis um, or even at all. It's an easy practice. And um, anything else that resonates with getting to know yourself, getting comfortable with you, getting comfortable with silence um, and, and yeah, trying to explore the layers of yourself. That's, those are easy first steps. I love that Lisa. I'm so happy that you came on to share these thoughts and ideas with us and tell the audience where the various places that they can find you and your work. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so you can find me on Instagram. My personal is at the Lisa Taylor. And then my company is the hive holistic. And then we have a YouTube channel called Luna spiritual wellness. Maybe I can share the link with you to share with everyone here. Absolutely. Um, and then my website is the hive holistic.com. And is there a hierarchy to your services? What do you, what do you focus on? Yeah. And what, what is the thing that they can reach out to you for most or that they can get the, the, the most immediate effect and response from? Yeah, sure. So the, the YouTube channel is great. So you get a sense of who I am and, and more of what I do and my philosophy. So that, that's a great place to start. And then um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I do one-on-one -on -one healings as well as group coaching. So we have a group starting in August, which is very exciting. Um, if you haven't done any type of healing work in a group, the, the thing that I love is that everything you do is amplified, meaning you have instant support, you have instant connection, and people are just willing to help you and support you in a really beautiful way. So that's in August. And then um, a healing session can be done anywhere from anywhere to anywhere. And that's a really good place to start too. So if you're feeling like, um, I don't know where to begin, or I, I feel this heaviness, I'm in a bad situation at work, I'm in a bad relationship, I don't know how to get out of it. I would say a healing session is a really good place to start. And they can get that with you. They can get that with me. Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool to hear. Lisa, thank you so much for being with us. And we will provide all the links to your various places where you can be reached. And we look forward to your success with your YouTube channel yeah. and with everything that you're doing. You're a light in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's good to know that you can be a light and be a business person. So that's a beautiful... <laughs> <laughs> thank you so good thank to you. See you namaste to you we look forward to yeah, seeing you namaste thank you i hope you have been inspired by lisa's story and lisa's example that you can be in both worlds you can be in the spirit world and you can also be in the material world and thriving in both that's a great example that she has given us and I'm thankful for Lisa Taylor for sharing with us today and I look forward to more from her and you can check out all of her uh, links and reach her through all of those sources. And for me, we're dealing with unusual circumstances today. Mercury retrograde is in full effect, causing me to have to improvise as you see. First time we've done any uh, post outside or in the car but hey I'm giving it to you by any means necessary so reach out to us on Instagram reach out to us on YouTube and reach out to us on our website astrologicastrology.com and we are always here to help you grow and understand more about yourself through the lens of astrology as always we wish you love and peace and we thank you for being here and we say goodbye with the word namaste the spirit in me recognizes and honors the spirit in you